and welcome to Belmont Journal, Belmont's news show and community update. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. And first, a reminder, Belmont Health Department is holding a booster clinic on Monday, December 13th from 4 to 6 p.m. at Beth L. Temple Center to Concord Ave in Belmont. Moderna vaccine will be provided at this clinic. To register, go to the website in the bottom of the screen. Also, please note that the town offices will be closed on Monday, December 27, and Friday, December 31st, all day. And now, our weekly report from Franklin Tucker, the editor of the Belmontonian.com. Hello, Franklin. Hello. Great to see you. We have uh, some news from our town administrator, Patrice Garvin. Can you please share? That's right. Uh, Patrice Garvin is one of the three finalists for a position over in Reading, Massachusetts. It's for the town manager. Um, um, she uh, was interviewed by their uh, select board or what, what they have as a, uh, as a select board. Um, and she did a great job. Uh, m many of the people who were, uh, who were talking to her, um, who were interviewing her, uh, just expressed a lot of interest in her and and how well she has been performing her job in both Shirley and in Belmont. And, um, you know, even uh, in, while she hasn't got the job yet, and there are two other candidates who are very good, um, I think she has a leg up just because of her experience as a municipal official. Um, so if that, if, so if, if Patrice takes that job, you know, she will be there and uh, she won't, she won't leave immediately. She'll, she'll be here until I believe mid-February when the uh, gentleman who is the town manager there in Reading will be retiring or leaving his position. So we will, have, so Patrice would be here until um, most of the budget process is over. Um, but we're right now, uh, we're, we're trying to uh, find a uh, assistant town manager because that person also left. He left for his hometown of uh, uh, Natick. Uh, and uh, so we will have to fill two positions. All right. And talking about funding, we have some news about ARCA and it's 7.6 million in the line. That's correct. Um, the uh, American Rescue Plan, which was passed in March, um, uh, provides uh, upwards to um, um, uh, $7.6 million in uh, COVID-related uh, uh, relief. Um, but uh, while the federal government gave the money to, to well, the states to give to Belmont, what they did is they said, we're going to give you the money, but the states will provide the regulations and, and, and um, um, calculations on how you can use the money. Now, um, there are four ways of using it. Uh, one is to uh, pay uh, essential workers uh, extra bonus um, and uh, infrastructure and also direct COVID inter, um, uh, expenses. Uh, the, the big issue is that um, the, the town of Belmont, which had uh, lost, which, which lost revenue uh, during, the, uh, during COVID, um, is looking to uh, take a um, portion of that money and just put it into their general fund. Which would which would help balance the budget. And I think the town was looking at it. It was going to balance the budget that way. Uh, it turns out that the that the people who are doing the regu who are do who are doing the rules and regulations in the state have stated that um, two things is that um, Belmont they basically said that um, uh, the debt exclusion, uh, which the voters voted on in, in twenty um, eighteen, um, and. And uh, also the reimbursement that uh, the town is getting from the Massachusetts uh, School Building Association, um, it's seen as revenue. So, so even though the, this debt and this uh, uh, reimbursement is, is being done simply to build the school, the state sees it as revenue. So we would probably not qualify under what the rules look like right now to put any of that money into our general fund. And it's something that um, it would hurt the budget process. Uh, and it's a surprise. And I think, and what's happening is that the uh, select board is going to be asking the state legislators and the US uh, representative, Kathleen Clark, to um, uh, try to have those rules change because it really help, it really hurts Belmont uh, simply because we wanted to build a, a new school. Correct. And changing the subject, we go with COVID. We will continue with the same regulations. That's right. The mask mandate will stay. I think there was a, a, a there was an opinion uh, that um, 
you know, maybe we could move away from uh, the mask mandate, but uh, because there has been a surge of COVID uh, cases in Massachusetts, around the world, really, um, that we'll be staying with a mask mandate for um, uh, longer than we thought. And now we are joined by Joanna Jubilis, multimedia journalist from the Belmont Citizen Herald and Wicked Local Belmont. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Maribel. Joanna, first, a renovation project for the CPA funding. We have news about that. Okay, Maribel, there are seven projects that are seeking community preservation funding at the upcoming Springtown meeting. They've all been approved. And one of them has a pretty high uh, price tag. It's about a little over a million dollars, a million thirty dollars. And what it's for is for the renovation of Payson Park. And this includes making it handicap accessible, fixing crumbling walls and uh, stairs and adding railings to the stairs and also adding a, a plaza area uh, central to the park that could be used for many different things, including performances. Um, however, the founder of the Payson Park Music Festival, Thomasina Olson, uh, expressed um, that she was not happy with this proposal because it, did, it does not include a bandstand. She's always wanted to have a bandstand. Well, actually, since about 2016, I think she's been trying to get a bandstand in this park to protect musicians. Because as you know, anyone who's gone to the Payson Park Music Festival over the past 31 years knows that sometimes it rains and that kind of stinks, but it could rain on the performers, which really stinks and, you know, ruin their um, instruments. So that's why she really wants this bandstand. She had a proposal for like a gazebo style bandstand, but that is not part of this project. That will have to be a separate project in the future. So the project is moving forward to town meeting for funding. And it's a possibility that this new plaza area that's part of the project could be used for performers, but it will not have a cover to, to protect them. So uh, stay tuned uh, for the spring town meeting to see what happens. All right. And now let's move to Waverly Square. We have some news from the mixed use development. Well, if anyone uh, has been in Waverly Square recently, you'll see right next to the Belmont Car Wash, there's two new mixed use buildings that are almost completed. The construction's been going on for a while. Um, Belmont resident, who's also a real estate developer, Joseph DiStefano is behind this project. It's called the Station at Waverly Square, but it's not just going to be the two buildings. There's actually going to be a third building built on the corner of White Street and Trapello Road. And that is phase three of this project, which the Zoning Board of Appeals just approved on December 6th. And what that's going to do is add 18 more apartments. So it'll be a building that will have 18 apartments plus 7,000 square feet of retail on the first floor. The other two buildings are 22 apartments and 10,000 square feet of retail. But in addition, there's going to be an underground garage, which will have 38 parking spaces, as well as uh, 33 surface spaces for a total of 71 parking spaces. So that's adding a lot of much needed parking to Waverly Square and off street parking. All right. And Hollywood came back in Belmont and you were there. I have to say this was really exciting and it was a nice 60 degree day to be outdoors to see all this happening in the Winbrook neighborhood. The crew from 20th Century Studios, which is behind the filming of Boston Strangler, was in the Winbrook neighborhood. They transformed Winbrook Elementary School into the Cambridge to police, police Department for the day. This movie is, is about a reporter, and the, the reporter is starring Kieran Knightley. And she is the reporter that they believe uh, actually helped solve the case of this Boston Strangler who allegedly killed 13 women between 1962 and 1964, including a Belmont resident who lived on Scott Road. Um, so there's a house on Statler Road that was also used as the home of this reporter played by Kira Knightley. And scenes were filmed outside all day on December 6th. There were 1960s cars, about 15 of them parked in driveways around this Statler Road home in the Winbrook neighborhood because this took place in the 1960s. And so it was really, um, really exciting to, to see, you know, they had uh, 
policemen that were dressed in 1960s police uniforms. So it took you back in time and everybody that I talked to was very excited about it. They didn't mind all the commotion because it was only a day. There was a big tent on the field at Winbrook, um, on the Winbrook Elementary School grounds used for um, dining for the crew. So everyone I talked to didn't mind all the commotion. They were really excited about this happening in their neighborhood. Just in time for the holidays, the Town of Belmont and the Economic Development Committee just launched the first ever Belmont Business Directory. Today to know more, we welcome Emma Thurston, Chair of the Economic Development Committee, and Gabriel Distler, Belmont Staff Planner. Emma, Gabriel, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having us. The directory can be found on the town website and the list of businesses is impressive. How many businesses did you collect? Gabe, did you get a final account? I think there were over 200 when I think I sent it off to you. So right now we actually have over 275. Um, and I've been adding more and more each day since I've launched it, except over the uh, holiday, of course. We're probably approaching 280 and possibly by the end of this week, 285. And what kind of businesses do we have in the list? The question is really, what kind of businesses do we not have on the list? We've tried to have all sorts of both retail and food service facing businesses, but also um, service facing businesses such as banking, finance, uh, business and professional services. We have education and training. We've broken it into different categories. So because we're promoting uh, holiday shopping, we put uh, food-oriented businesses and retail-oriented businesses at the top. But we also have below sections, uh, multiple different categories. So you can find an auto mechanic. You can find a um, healthcare provider. You can find provide a legal provider. We have government and municipal services on here. We have contractors. Uh, this is not a finished list, this will always be a work in progress. And that's why if your business is not on here, please uh, feel free to go on the town website and contact me. What did it take to achieve it? It was definitely a top priority for the Economic Development Committee for the past year. Um, you know, we found out when we when we launched the group last summer, you know, we realized, or sorry, it was summer of 2020, we realized that um, there wasn't one central database for not only contact information for businesses or what types of businesses there were, but not even like a directory or anything. So we cobbled together information from different departments in town, from different resources that we had, and then uh, honestly did a lot of door to door. There were a lot of people walking around and introducing themselves and, and talking to businesses. And then what, the information that we did have, we then wanted to confirm that. We don't want to put a business up there that's been gone for two years or has moved or anything. So. Then it was just a lot of online, like, does this website go to the place it's supposed to go? Does this, is this address correct? So um, it was a, a lot of people doing a lot of different pieces and taking information from everywhere we had it. And then uh, Gabe was kind enough to get that up online really quickly. It was important to us to get that up before the holiday season really kicked into gear. So Great. And what do you hope this directory will achieve or which goals does it serve? You know, when you drive around Belmont, there's you notice things like, oh, I didn't know that that was there. I didn't know that this restaurant had opened. Um, so we really hope it'll be a central location for people to be able to say, I want to go, I, I want I want some takeout tonight. Who, who can I get in Belmont? And just be able to really quickly go through and see what they need. But then there's some browsing as well. If you go to the web page, you can go through and see what there is for shopping. And I guarantee you, you will find things that you didn't know were there. And I think the discovery of that is really important. And I wanted, wanted to add to that point too, a lot of businesses that are more service oriented and less your traditional restaurants or retail establishments might not have a physical presence, but still serve the Belmont community. We want to let people know about people who might be offering accounting services, people who might be offering um, financial services like that, as well as people who might uh, have doctor or dentist practices in town, law offices, uh, the sort of type of business that maybe if you're walking around Belmont Center or Cushing Square, you might not necessarily see on the street. In some cases you will, but in some cases you won't. We want a centralized place so people 
know we're service oriented businesses like that are and can hopefully find um, a provider within the community uh, to serve that need. Right. Is the directory an evolutive document? Yeah, I think there's going to be, you know, we, we wanted to get it up and going and Gabe is doing the, the tough work of collecting all the information that's coming in now that it was launched, which is great because it means people are actually looking at it and noticing businesses that aren't on there or amending their business that is. But hopefully over time, it will become more interactive for people in the public. It will become a little bit more polished and potentially have other components, potentially maybe a map component to it some way just to make it even more easy for people in the community to find businesses. And what will be the next project? Oh, I don't know. We will need to regroup in January and go through our priorities again and find out exactly what we need to focus on, what's what's the most important objective. We've got a lot of opportunity out there. And this year has been really taken up a lot with the local rapid recovery program. We've been very focused on that and, and going after grants. The town does the grant work, but um, getting all the projects ready with the local rapid recovery plan has been has been a big chunk of this year. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of work to do after the new year with that too, and hopefully some grant money coming in as well. Correct. Is there anything last minute uh, last word you want to share with the community? I I would just say you know use that resource. It's really great. We have so many different businesses and types of business businesses in town. It's it's really there's so many places that that you can go and find new things and do your holiday shopping and find, as Gabe said, just the different services that, that Belmont provides um, and really support your local community. You know, the economy, the local economy is super important and anything that you can do to keep dollars in that economy, I think are just, it's crucial, especially coming, you know, where we are with the pandemic. Because we really want people to be able to use this as a resource to spend some of their holiday shopping money in the community. We, I also want to uh, add the point that a lot of businesses in Belmont, a lot of retail facing businesses do do online delivery and um, you can purchase things online. So this is a chance if you don't want to, for whatever reason, leave your home, you can use this as a resource as well. So I think that that's really one angle we're pushing, but also if you want to come in and visit a business in person, you can find an address, you can find a phone number to figure out when it's going to be opened. And I really hope that this is impactful for the community and people when they're doing their holiday shopping this year and when they're doing, looking for uh, businesses or services after the holidays and the new year, continue to use this. Alia Georges was born and raised in Belmont. Now she has her own small business, Sweetheart Vegan Bakery in town as well. She tells us more. My name is Alia Georges and I am the owner of Sweetheart Vegan Bakery here in Belmont. It's really just gotten started in 2021. For me, food has always been kind of my love language. I grew up in a family where we all cooked a lot. My parents owned restaurants. My dad had a falafel truck for a while. Pretty much everyone in my family has worked in kitchens for significant periods of time, worked in restaurants. So I feel like this business is kind of my small way of building on and kind of honoring that legacy. Currently my business is a home-based business, so I make everything here in just my apartment kitchen. And I sell my products online as well as at pop-ups and events like the Belmont Farmers Market and there's a Belmont Holiday Market this weekend that I'll be at. Um, so events like that where I can get out into the community. And a big goal that I have with Sweetheart Vegan Bakery is to help people understand what I've really come to learn, which is that vegan baked goods really can and should be you know, just as delicious and indulgent and fun as, you know, conventional products made with, with animal products. So that's something that I really want to share is that, you know, if you choose to incorporate more plant-based or vegan items into your life, that you don't really have to give up the types of foods that you love or that you grew up with or, um, you know, that feel special to you. Vegan means that Simply, it's made without animal products. So I make everything fresh to order for my customers. I make you know cookies and cakes and 
you know, breads and pastries. I don't use eggs. I don't use dairy milk. I don't use dairy butter or any other animal products. So I use all, you know, vegan or plant-based ingredients in, in what I make. I'm fortunate to feel very rooted here in Belmont. I actually grew up here in town. Currently where I live, I live near Waverly Square and I live within a one mile radius of my parents and my sister and my cousin lives literally right across the street right there. So I have a lot of family in this area. I feel very connected to the community. I got married in Belmont and my goal is I really want to be your neighborhood baker um, in kind of a very old fashioned sense. And now a community calendar. Belmont Recreation invites you to its holiday decorating contest. Decorate your home, take a photo during the day and at night, submit your photo with your name and address to recreation at belmontma.gov by Thursday, December 16 at noon and wait for the results. Belmont Recreation will create a map with all decorated houses addresses for the community to drive around. The recreation staff will visit the winning houses before December 23rd to deliver prices and take photos. More info at belmontrec.com. Belmont Recreation's winter program registration is open. These activities will take place between January and March. Head over to belmontrec.com to see all the fun things the recreation department has to offer and stay active this winter. Join local author and immigration lawyer Susan Cohen as she discusses her new book on a Zoom webinar with Belmont Books on Tuesday, December 14 at 7 p.m. Journeys from there to here is stories of immigrant trials, triumphs, and contributions. Tell the stories of immigrants and one of them, Rosemary Subuga, will participate in the discussion. Register on belmontbooks.com. Belmont Public Library Virtual Trivia Night is back. Join the librarians for another evening of virtual trivia for solo players and teams on Wednesday, December 15th at 7 p.m. The questions are geared towards adults in challenge rating. But in case of families want to play together, there are no embarrassing questions or content. To participate, register on the Belmont Public Library's website. Do you like holiday music? Two of local musicians, Heck and Annie Hopsipian, violin and piano, are bringing a cheerful musical concert to celebrate the season to the Beach Street audience on Friday, December 17 at 1.15 p.m. The program includes a range of familiar winter favorites to sing along or simply listen to. To register, please call 617-993-2976. The nature of Massachusetts is filled with seasonal mysteries waiting to be uncovered. Have you ever wondered which animal left tracks in the snow? What happens to pot animals under a layer of ice? Or what trees are lining the trails on your winter walks? Mass Audubon is offering an online program, The Nature of Winter, that explains that it all, on January 6, 2022 at 7 p.m. Register on massaldebon.org. And that's it for this week's edition of Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>